Hi, uh, my name is Gary Malante. I'm the senior researcher at the Stockholm International Peace Research Institute. And there I lead the Global Registry of Violent Deaths Initiative. We are here today at USIP working with senior practitioners and, and people that think about how we learn uh, and the learning agenda so that we can improve how we do development, how we do peace building, how we do humanitarian work in countries most affected by conflict. Well, I have a lot of concerns about global conflict trends. Uh, in this is fall of 2022 now. Uh, we're thinking about increasing the uh, number of conflicts. We're thinking about all the people that are displaced uh, and refugees from conflict. Particularly in the last few years, we've seen an uptick in violent deaths that are associated with conflict. And that's a goal of ours, is to reduce violent deaths associated uh, with conflict and intentional homicides by 2030. So uh, this decade of delivery uh, going forward, the, the next 10 years, is going to be really pivotal in creating a more peaceful world. Part of the way we're doing that is with the Global Registry of Violent Deaths. That's an initiative to measure and monitor all violent deaths, geolocate them, and temporarily code them. Uh, and so GRIEVED, that's the acronym, is used to be able to monitor uh, violence over time and tell us that whether we're doing better by, we, by the 2030. Well, this is a super tricky year, of course, with the developments in Ukraine. Uh, now we're concerned that the multilateral system, as represented by the United Nations and by others, uh, other actors, it's not serving us as well as we might like. Um, and so I think this is a, a period where we're going to be having to adapt a lot to changing circumstances in the world and how we can work with allies and people that are interested in peace and democracy. Uh, and who the people are that are going to help us be able to create a more peaceful world going forward. Now, the tricky part with that is uh, that these kind of spheres of influence from different large powers uh, do change over time. And so my concern is that uh, the old proverb that when the elephants fight, the grass gets trampled, that really it's the most developed countries, it's the people in poverty, uh, it's people in fragile states that are going to get left behind. And so part of our work is to be able to keep the focus on them and make sure that we don't leave them behind in the next decade of delivery. I mean, the question here is how can donors do things differently with changing their behavior and really learning uh, and adapting to the changing world? And I think we've seen a kind of retrenchment, and that's because the world is constantly in flux, and people are trying to respond to that and use the systems that they have to be able to respond to that uh, with development, with humanitarian, with peace building assistance. And increasingly, we're finding that we need to do those things together. We need to work on delivering humanitarian assistance that is also informed by peace building, that also promotes sustainable development. And sustainable, of course, being linked to. Uh, not just peaceful and democratic, but also environmentally sustainable. So our challenges today are integrating these things together and helping to deliver a peaceful vision from people on the ground, uh, the recipients, the beneficiaries, the national stakeholders, civil society and governments that are interested in peace and helping them to build the peace and the development that they want.